Hi everyone. This episode is in response to a very, very good question that I've had from uh, a friend of mine. And the question is, how on earth do you manage mouth ulcers when you are going through chemotherapy? This is a great, great question because mouth ulcers and chemotherapy seem to um, be hand in glove. Uh, the reason being that chemotherapy is, which is an excellent treatment for cancer, is a treatment that specifically targets cells of our body that rapidly divide. Now, one of the characteristics of cancer cells is that they divide extremely quickly. They replicate themselves at a very fast rate. And so that's why you have these drugs. They go for cells that are replicating quickly because in those cells they're unraveling their DNA a lot to reproduce themselves and that unraveled DNA is extremely vulnerable and the drugs are targeted to get in and attack it and stop those cancer cells from dividing and replicating and making more of themselves. Problem is we have other cells in our body that also uh, replicate themselves quite quickly and those cells are the cells of our immune system, the white blood cells but also the cells of the skin that line the mouth. Also, of course, the eyes and the gut. So a lot of the side effects and symptoms that you experience when you're taking chemotherapy drugs are because of the impacts on those very delicate cells that are important part of our body and our health and our well-being. Um, but those cells are also very badly impacted. Now, in the mouth, what happens when you're going through chemotherapy is that, as I said, the cells, your white blood cells, the cells of your immune system are impacted and they tend to reduce. Uh, also your platelet count, the little broken up pieces of cell that cause your blood to clot, they can also drop to a very low level. And the cells that line the skin of your cheeks and your tongue are also affected and they tend to become thin and they become very, very easily wounded. So that the things that you normally used to eat that didn't give you any trouble can actually cause quite substantial ulceration because they cut or break that very, very delicate skin. Then on top of that, you don't have the white blood cells in their best condition to come in and help that wound heal. So when you get mouth ulcers, you not only get them more easily, they take longer to heal and they can be more painful. And so, you know, if you bite your cheek or you eat something hard like corn chips, you end up with it um, causing a serious wound. The other impact of chemotherapy and the other thing that it affects and impacts on are your saliva glands. So these are the, the glands at the back of the jaw and underneath the jaw that produce that beautiful saliva that is one of the most protective things for teeth. Saliva is needed not only for the health of your teeth, it puts minerals into them, it also contains the antibodies that uh, make life very difficult for the bacteria in the mouth, but also for the funguses that can grow in the mouth. So another impact of chemotherapy is an increase in candida, otherwise known as oral thrush. Candida is a very stubborn and very difficult organism to deal with and to get rid of. Uh, once it gets entrenched, it's, it's like a really unwanted house guest that you don't seem to be able to get rid of. So what do you do if you're going through chemotherapy? The first thing you need to do is to keep your diet extremely bland and soft. Sorry guys, there really is no way about it. If you decide to eat a bag of corn chips, I can tell you now it's going to go really, really badly. The intensity of the salt and the sharpness is going to cut that very, very delicate skin. You have to treat your mouth very differently when you're going through chemo. It's not, it's not robust like it used to be. Um, you want to keep everything quite neutral, not extremely highly flavoured. You might even find that your taste perception is quite impacted during chemotherapy. Food doesn't taste the same. You do need to eat though. Um, 
but keep everything soft and really lay off the chilli and intense spices and intense sweetness. Okay, you've got reduced, not only reduced saliva flow, but also the quality of your saliva won't be the same. So what I would highly recommend you do is have the lowest decay-causing diet that you can manage. You want to really reduce your sugar intake. I know, back to that, but it's true. You don't have your greatest asset during chemotherapy working to its best ability. So the sugars you eat, your teeth are going to be far, far, far more susceptible to them. The other thing that I encourage is that you use the most delicate kind of mouth rinse that you possibly can to help support your mouth and to heal it, especially if you're getting a lot of ulcers. The best mouthwash you could probably use would be a very small pinch of bicarb soda in a complete glass of water. It is going to be very non-astringent and non-burning. If you use commercial mouthwashes, I mean, there may be a time and your dentist may rec uh, recommend it for a period of time, but truly you want to keep it very, very neutral. Now, the benefit of what neutral I mean in terms of the intensity of the flavor, you don't want those burning type of mouth rinses. They'll just torture you for very little benefit. So... Uh, the benefit of the bicarb is that it's extremely alkaline. Even a small amount will have a very beautiful alkalizing effect on your mouth. The alkalinity will be very, very helpful for people who suffer from the oral candida infections, uh, but also during mouth ulceration. So soft diet, take it very, very easy with hard foods. Keep your oral hygiene up to a very high standard. Also, you may need to get a more neutral toothpaste, one with a milder flavour, so it doesn't, again, produce that burning effect on your delicate skin. Uh, sodium bicarbonate mouth rinses, floss. Yes, you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? You need to keep the floss going. And please work with your dentist. I always say this because it's true. Very often when you're first diagnosed with cancer, the last person you're thinking of is the dentist. Like, seriously, we're the last. But, or maybe the accountant's last. But definitely we're very low on the list. But you've got to get in touch with your dentist as soon as you can and have them working with you to support you. That's our job, to support you all of the time. Please let your dentist know that you are having chemotherapy. We need to know. I'm going to do another um, vlog on this very, very soon, you know, about why dentists need to know about medications. We need to know. Um, every now and again, I've had people having very serious medications for cancers or other conditions that haven't told me their medication list. And, you know, we can't help you if we don't know what you're taking. So... Lovely to be in contact with everyone again, and I trust that this is of use. And if you know people going through chemotherapy, please share this with them. This is the sort of information they need to know, and often they don't ask their dentist, or as I said, the dentist becomes way down the list of priorities, and people are not getting the care they need. So I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.